Hello everyone, and this is my 2017 Cadillac ATS. Now I've seen a ton of car walkthroughs on YouTube, and I thought I'd give it a try myself. So uh, let me give you a brief overview on the car. This car has an inline four, making 272 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. And as I probably put in the title, this is my first car, and I feel very fortunate to have it. My parents and I, we both wanted something that was safe, reliable, and cheap to maintain, and this car fits that while also being a blast to drive. I also personally think it looks super cool. So yeah, today is going to be more of a lo-fi video, not much editing compared to normal. I just wanted to talk to you all about something I really enjoy talking about. So yeah, I hope you enjoy and let's get into it. So here at the front, I'm going to start with the front splitter on the bottom. I put this on probably about two months ago. It's just a plastic gloss black and it was pretty cheap. It was only like 60 bucks and I have never put on a front splitter before. So I was like, you know, why not try it? Why not put this on, see how it looks? And I think it turns out pretty good. I don't need anything crazy right now because again, this is my first car. It's kind of on a budget. And talking about being on a budget, we're going to go to the hood here and I'm going to show you my unfortunately fake air vents. These are not real because I don't have the money or the time to actually install a real hood scoop. My goal is to get an ATS V styled hood scoop right in the center, but it's going to be a little while until that happens because I'm going to college. I need to save money for that and unfortunately I can't pour it into my car it's very very sad I don't know what you all think about it I know a couple of my friends don't really like them because they aren't functional but they were only nine bucks and I personally think they look pretty cool so as I'm walking around the car I want to show off its pros and its cons to give a fair assessment of the car to you guys one of its cons here is the paint work the paint is peeling it's chipping there's a little bit of rust and of course this was to be expected it has driven a hundred thousand miles and it it wasn't really garage kept for most of its life and let's be honest from far away it looks completely fine i just thought this was the perfect segue into our sponsor paintworks incorporated now i'm just kidding there's no sponsorship i just really felt like i was becoming a car reviewer just now and sorry uh, let's just get back to the video here are my halogen headlights they are super dim so one of the first things i did when i first got the car was switch the bulbs and now they're a lot brighter now eventually i want to change the headlight housing but for right now it works now moving on to the grill here i'm gonna be honest i just don't really like it that much it's not as cool as the atsv grill i know i can buy a mesh overlay that goes over this grill makes it look a little cooler but um i i just haven't bought it yet so instead i blacked out all of the chrome on the grill and I think it looks pretty decent. I also blacked out the badge, which unfortunately is peeling now, and the grill is also made of cheap plastic. And real quick, I wanted to show you my windshield. This is a brand new aftermarket windshield after I was cleaning my car and I cracked my original windshield in half. I'm glad I have a new windshield, but wow, that was a little pricey for me. Now, as I'm walking down the side here, I wanna say this side profile is probably my favorite part of the car, and yes, those are footprints. Uh, don't ask me how they got there. I like to tell people that the previous owner had a bad date and you know, that I, I, I really don't know because they were there when I bought the car. And speaking of other things that came with the car, I found a fingernail, a full fingernail in the side of my door and I also found a fortune cookie and some spilled coffee under the center console. Now I want to draw your attention to the side windows here. They are tinted. The rear ones were already tinted for me when I got it, and the front ones were not, so I learned how to tint myself. As you can see, the edges are not perfect. This was my first time ever tinting, um, and you know, for the most part, I think it looks pretty good. There's a couple little imperfections here and there, but you know, for the most part, I think it looks really good. And just to let you know, the rear windshield and side windows are 20%, and the front side windows are 35%. The windshield is untinted. So the car is perfectly legal. Keeping with the side profile, I want to talk to you guys about my rims and tires here. So here are the stock rims that came with my car. I think they look very nice. They're like a graphite finish and um, i have new tires on here they are hankook mavis traction control tires um, they, they were michelins originally until i blew them on the highway and i needed a quick repair so they had some hankook tires in stock when i took it to mavis after i got it towed there and 
I got that all sorted and they've actually been quite comfortable and they have a really good warranty on them so I'm not complaining. And right here is one of my brake calipers. Uh, these are Brembo brakes and these were originally gray but I painted them red using some Plasti Dip. People complain about Plasti Dip all the time because it's not like actually painting your brakes but i think it's great because the caliper really doesn't get that hot so it stays on really well and you don't have to do all of the sanding and prep work all the tedious stuff that you have to do when actually painting your brake calipers with permanent paint i do admit these rear brake calipers are not looking the best but to that i say don't paint your brake calipers in the dark at 10 o'clock at night um you do not get great results and right here, I ended up putting some side skirts on the car. This was part of the front splitter and side skirt package that I bought from Amazon. And these, I kind of sort of like um, some days. I don't know. I kind of feel indifferent about them. They're okay, but they're not game changing. But yeah. And just take a second here, look at this side profile. Am I the only one that thinks this looks amazing? I don't know. And here is the driver's side of the car. This side is pretty much the same as the passenger side as you would expect but it's in like perfect condition on this side the passenger side has a couple dings it has some footprints the gas cap is kind of dented uh, but this side the driver's side looks amazing right here is the rear of the car so a couple things i did right off the bat the cadillac emblem is now blacked out and the other badges, such as the ATS, uh, the 2.0 turbo badge, and the all-wheel drive badge, I took them all off. I think it looks a lot cleaner, a lot more aggressive. Here is the little ducktail spoiler here. I think it looks really, really good on this car. And the back right tail light here, I accidentally backed this car into a trash can a long time ago when I first got it. And I switched out the tail light, replaced it. That was fun. Oh, and I have to show you this one part of the car. This one part of the car always gets dirty. This is where all the rain, everything puddles up and it just gets so gross. It's just like flat platform. It's crazy. In terms of the exhaust, I switched out the old muffler with a Cherry Bomb Extreme and I put new exhaust tips on. I also repainted the rear diffuser cause it was fading a ton. And honestly, yeah, that's pretty much everything with the exterior of the car. So let's go to the interior. So one of my favorite things about this interior is how sporty it feels, but also how luxurious it still is while having that sport feel. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice, and this was one of the main reasons I bought the car, were these Recaro racing seats. The styling on these seats are absolutely amazing. And when you sit in them, you just fall right back into it. You feel secure driving the car and they are some of the most comfortable seats I've ever sat in. These seats are 14 way adjustable. Both the driver and passenger seats are powered with heating, of course. And I'm keeping this car for a very long time because it has a lot of sentimental value to me. But if I had to sell the seats, I found the same ones on eBay damaged for 1800 that's insane that's not even including the rear seats too but enough about the seats here's the carbon fiber trim that i think looks really good and this one came with the bose 10 speaker one sub sound system i saw on the carfax before buying it that the whole sound system was replaced so i'm i'm glad i didn't have to do that and coming over from the door panel here is the view you would have driving this car I have pretty much every sensor, assist, and warning that you can possibly get around 2017 when this car was made. For example, my seat vibrates whenever I'm too close to something, and the heads-up display flashes red on my windshield. Even though I'm still sad, my car didn't come with its full functionality. I'll start the car up and you can see the gauge cluster light up. I honestly didn't like this gauge cluster at first because I preferred the original kind of analog display but now it's really grown on me. I do really like it. Here is the center console with the Cadillac Q display. There's a lot of gloss black here, which can be annoying to keep clean, but check out this cool red carbon fiber engine start stop button overlay. I think it looks pretty good. Now the Cadillac Q system, I've personally had no problems with it. I thought it was pretty good and it's responsive as you can see here. However, I do have a friend with two Cadillacs and his systems are do not work very well. So I don't know, I guess it's a toss up. If you have have a good queue system or not i also have built-in navigation even though it doesn't matter because i have carplay but still kind of nice and being honest sometimes carplay can be a little finicky on this car so always nice to have a backup i also wanted to show you here what comes up when you want to adjust the recaro seats there's a lot of ways you can adjust these 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 are amazing i can't say it enough and down here are some basic buttons including the drive mode selector auto stop start 
and of course a massive traction control off button. <laughs> Below here, I added some ambient lighting, which are just these light strips. They're on the front dashboard here, and they're also under my seats. You can change the color of them via an app, but this bluish purple, I, I love and I almost never change it. I also have this not so secret compartment that you can open by putting your finger right on the bottom. This is typically where I store my wallet. There is also a wireless charger back here, but this is from 2017, so my phone's way too big to fit in here. This compartment also locks when you put the car in valet mode. And here's some terrible footage of my headliner and sunroof, I guess. And here's the center console, nothing crazy, I just have a cord, and I 3D printed this tray to keep things more organized. Now if we go into the rear seats here, these, these seats are like oddly really comfortable in the back and there is a decent amount of leg room considering how small of a car this is. You can see the ambient lighting under the seats here and you can also see the Alcantara all across the car on the backs of these Recaro seats. I think it looks really nice. And we also have a 12 volt plug and a home outlet power source back here, which is kind of surprising, but greatly appreciated. Also, we have cup holders here. We got a little storage compartment with some Kleenex in there apparently. Did not know that was there. And we got passed through to the trunk. And the subwoofer for the Bose audio system is right back here. Now my trunk, here it is. It actually does have a really good amount of storage space. I've been putting mulch in here, which is why it, it's so dirty. But to give you an idea of size, I've easily fit two full-size suitcases in here. And I also wanted to show off these new floodlights I put in with the Cadillac emblem on the ground. It's still a little bit bright out, so you can't see them super well, but you can you can still see that there. And here is the engine to the car. In terms of future plans with this car, I plan to do a cold air intake, E85 fuel, upgraded turbo and downpipes, a catback exhaust rather than a muffler delete, of course a tune, and some coilovers, even though that's not part of the engine. Most of this of course being done through ZZP, because why not? They have the fastest ATS in the world for a reason. So yeah, anyways, that's the walkthrough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I tried to focus more on what I've done to the car and what I've done to make this special to me, rather than the standard kind of statistics on this car that are already all over the internet so yeah i hope you enjoyed and here's just kind of an exploded view of the car to end the video out so yeah thank you guys for watching and i will see you in my next video Bye bye